Hey math students, how you doing? I want to look at some graphs today. And um, what I want to show you is I want to show you something that my dad actually showed me a long, long time ago when I was studying trigonometry for the first time. And I was trying to remember all these different identities, uh, including what the graphs looked like and the double angle identities. And it was those two things in particular that he said, oh, 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 look, they, they, uh, they go together very nicely. So let me show you what, uh, uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, here we have a sine wave, okay? Uh, and uh, what I want to know is, what's the graph of sine squared of x going to look like? Okay, so on this graph here, <clears throat> every point on the graph, the x-coordinate is just the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is the sine of x. So what's the graph going to look like if I square that y-coordinate, if I get the sine squared of x? Well, um, I know one thing, any place where it's zero, it's going to continue being zero. So, okay, all the zeros will remain zero. And also, well, one squared still equals one, right? So any place where the y-coordinate is one, the y-coordinate is going to remain one in the sine squared of x. And, uh, well, and let's see. Will it ever be less than zero? No, because it's something squared, and you can't have something squared being less than zero. And will it ever be greater than one? No, because the sine of x is always somewhere between negative one and one, and if you square that, you get a number that's one or, or less. Um, now, what about when it's negative one, though? When it's negative one, negative one squared is one, so that means we're gonna have these points on here where on the sine of x, the y-coordinate's negative one, but on the sine squared of x, it's going to be positive one. Huh. So what that means is our graph is going to be bouncing up and down between 0 and 1. It's going to look kind of like this. So, what is this? Well, it looks like a sinusoidal wave, but that's not a, that's not a sine wave, is it? Uh, I mean, it's not a, it's not a sine function. Uh, that's hitting the y-axis at the minimum. That's a cosine, and in particular, that's a negative cosine. Uh, and let's see what else is going on. It's a negative cosine. The minimum is, is, is at zero, and the maximum is at one. So what that tells me is it's been pushed up uh, by one half, as a matter of fact. And not only that, the amplitude, if you go from one half up to one or one half down to zero, the amplitude is also one half. What about the period? If I go from minimum to minimum, uh, I'm going from zero to pi. That tells me the period is just pi. So let's see. It's a negative cosine, vertical shift of one half, the amplitude is one half, and the period is pi. That sounds to me like uh, negative one half times the cosine of two x plus one half, right? And remember what this was to start with? It was the sine squared of x. So apparently this is that. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, let's just uh, multiply uh, both sides by, let's say, negative two, all right? If we multiply both sides by negative two, I get negative two times the sine squared of x equals cosine of 2x minus 1. And now if I add 1 to both sides, what I get is the cosine of 2x equals 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of x. Hey, that's, that's one of my double angle identities. So this double angle identity, we could have just picked that up straight off the graph. That's kind of cool. Well, now I want to see what happens when I square cosine. Let's do that. All right. So let's see a cosine. Here we go. There's a cosine function. Okay, so we're going to be squaring the cosine. So what does that mean? It means the same thing we did with the sine wave. So anytime there's a zero, the zero is going to be the same. Anytime it goes through, anytime the y-coordinate's one, those points are still going to be on there. And anytime the y-coordinate is negative one, that's going to become positive one. So again, we're going to see it 
going up and down between 0 and positive 1, just like this. Looks a lot like the last one, doesn't it? Except this time, uh, what I notice is it's intersecting the y-axis at the, at the maximum, not the minimum. So this is a positive cosine, but it still has an amplitude of one half. It's still been shifted up by one. It still has a period of pi instead of two pi. So this is, let's see, this is a positive one half times the cosine of two x plus one half. And remember how we got it in the first place. That is, we squared the cosine. Okay. Uh, let's multiply both sides by 2, and I get 2 cosine squared of x equals cosine of 2x plus 1. And if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get the cosine of 2x equals 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. And hot dang it, that's another one of my identities. Okay? So 2 out of the 3 uh, identities for the cosine of 2x or the cosine of 2 theta, I can figure out just by looking at the graphs of sine squared or cosine squared. All right. Well, now let's look at something. Let's look at one more. And this time, instead of squaring the sine or instead of squaring the cosine, let's take a look at uh, both the sine and the cosine. So there they are, sine wave and cosine wave. So now what I want to do is I want to say, what does it look like if I multiply the sine times the cosine? Okay, well, so if y equals sine of x times cosine of x, that means any time that either the sine or the cosine is zero, my graph is also going to be zero. So it's got all those zeros in it. And uh, let's think about when, uh, um, when x is pi over 4. When x is pi over 4, then both the sine and the cosine are root 2 over 2, right? So if I were to multiply sine times cosine, I would be multiplying root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2. And the square root of 2 over 2 times itself gives me 1 half. So that means any time that uh, the sine and the cosine are both root 2 over 2, the y-coordinate of my new graph is going to be one-half. So I'm going through these blue points here. All right. Uh, oh, and those blue points, you'll notice that some of them correspond to when the sine and cosine are both root 2 over 2, and some correspond to when the sine and cosine are both negative root 2 over 2, because the same thing still applies. You multiply negative root 2 over 2 times negative root 2 over 2, you get a half. Okay? Well, what about at times like... Uh, 3 pi over 4, or perhaps negative pi over 4. Well, then, out of sine and cosine, one of them is square root of 2 over 2, and the other one is negative square root of 2 over 2. So that means when you multiply them together, they're going to be negative 1 half. So we get these points down here. And so now if I just kind of clear the graphs away, I can see, all right, I'm going to end up with a graph that's snaking its way through all of those points, and it ends up looking like that. All right, that, that's a sine wave, okay? It's going through the origin, headed up. That's definitely what a sine looks like, uh, except uh, it's, a little, it's a little shorter than it normally is. That's, uh, again, the amplitude is just one half. There's no vertical shift this time, but the amplitude is one half, and again, the period is just pi. So what we have here is the graph of one half times the sine of two x. And remember what we did to get this? We multiplied the sine of x times the cosine of x. Well, hey folks, just multiply both sides times two, and what do you get? You get the sine of two x equals two times the sine of x times the cosine of x. That's our identity for the double angle for the sine of x. All right. I like this. I like it when we, we, we analyze it from this perspective, and then we analyze it from this perspective, and then they come together. I find that very, very satisfying, and I hope you do too. Uh, and uh, 
this isn't something that is uh, uh, that where you have to memorize anything. This isn't something where you have to uh, take close notes and uh, uh, and be able to you know replicate this later on. This is more of just sort of a hmm, it all ties in together type of moment. Okay, all right. See you at the next video. Bye bye.